All right, it's time now for Focus, and today we have a report on the tensions in Cameroon's English-speaking regions. Anglophones say they're being treated as second-class citizens. Lawyers were the first to take action, protesting against the use of French in courts. Then teachers went on strike. Last month, several people were killed during a protest in Bamenda, the country's largest Anglophone city. And that's where our report begins. From the hills above the valley, the breathtaking view of a defiant city. Bamenda, the capital of one of the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon, is now under the supervision of special police protection units. Armed patrols in a city at the epicentre of an unprecedented contestation, still bruised after several days of rioting. In this amateur video shot by protesters, flames of anger rise above the city. At the head of the procession, one of the leaders of the protest, Mancho Bibixi. The mouthpiece of these Anglophone protesters, a linguistic minority in an officially bilingual country. A few days later, freed after being arrested, He's still determined to fight in the name of the 20% of Anglophones that feel marginalised by Francophones. Living in a centralised state is out of the question for this activist. Either they give us a federation, which means that the Anglophone population will have their own parliament. They will have a prime minister and the same thing will be for the Francophone population, and they will live together. We can elect our mayor, we elect our governor, and we stay together. If they don't want to give us that, then they should allow us go. Let Anglophones go their way and form their own state. Let Francophones stay in La Republique. The English school system on a month-long strike is at a standstill, demanding a federal state with an autonomous English language administration. Wilfred Tassang, leader of a powerful teachers' union, is in a standoff with the government after he decreed the closure of schools. That's my brother. A directive that was widely followed, like at this school. For him, there's no backing down without obtaining linguistic preference for English teachers. Our grievances uh, have to do with the fact that the government is training and sending francophone teachers to teach Anglophone children. And to us, the what we use is that they unteach the children, they destroy the children, uh, because they teach them um, in a language that is neither English nor French. On the surface, things seem to have returned to normal in Bamenda, but so far, no agreement's been reached between the Cameroonian government and the Anglophone protesters. Relative calm has returned in the streets despite a burdening tension in the air in this historic opposition stronghold. A few kilometres from the city, an immense estate belonging to the man regarded as the richest of Cameroon, a billionaire Anglophone, reputedly close to the government. A quiet entrepreneur involved for several days in discreet negotiations to avoid further escalation of the Anglophone crisis. The red line? Absolutely no federalism in a country with nearly 300 local languages and almost as many ethnic groups. Federalism is not possible at all. It's not possible. I cannot even write it down. It's not possible at all. We are, we, we are beyond that now, long time. It's, it's not possible. When anybody who is asking for federalism, really he doesn't like this Cameroon. Federalism, a political system applied in the country after the French and English tutelage between 1961 and 1972, dates back to the reunification of the two Cameroons. A united republic, never accepted by this small group, advocating the secession of the Anglophone region. An illegal organisation, according to Cameroonian law, sporting a forbidden secessionist flag. Freedom now! Freedom now!
A handful of elderly militants already imprisoned several times still dream of an independent English-speaking country. We are all resolved. Southern Cameroonians who are the owners of this land understand it. And that is why the clamor now is for nothing but independence. The Anglophone issue will most likely be a fixture on the Cameroonian political agenda throughout 2017. Now, for more on the situation in Cameroon, I'm joined in the studio by Julie Owono. She works for Internet Without Borders and is their head the head of their Africa Bureau. Hello, thank you very much indeed for coming in. I'd like to start off with a bit more context. There aren't just two official languages in Cameroon. There are two completely different systems, right? Absolutely. The Anglophone problem could be summarized not only by the language issue, but also by a conflict of laws, a conflict of systems. On the one hand, you have uh, two different colonial realities, which are the French colonial era in the Francophone bar and the Eng English-speaking one, which resulted in two different systems, the common law system on the one hand, the civil law system on the other hand, the self-government system on the one hand, and the assimilization and centralized system on the other hand. And the question really in Cameroon for the past 60 years has been, how to reconcile these two visions and how to make them work into a united uh, government, into a united co country. And unfortunately, history has proved that until now, Cameroonian authorities have not been able to find a solution to that. The first solution was federalism, uh, which was fed federalism only in the name, because in the Constitution, even the, the, the predominance of French was recognized in the Constitution, 1961 Constitution. And then uh, there was uh, unification in 1972, uh, which resulted indeed in probably marginalizing further uh, the Anglophone uh, part of the country and the Anglophone population, which results today in the fact that uh, citizens, constitu constituents, don't understand why in uh, Anglophone countries they are governed by, uh, you know, préfets who do not speak English or who go to the, the post office and are met with people who don't speak English and who don't want to speak English. And this is, I think, where the marginalization feeling uh, was born uh, in, in Cameroon. Why do you think, though, it's now that we're seeing people take to the streets, we're seeing the Anglophone minority say enough is enough? Uh, historically, uh, we've we've seen that in Cameroon, these federalism with this secessionist uh, sometimes uh, expression have uh, coincided with social and economic ordeals for the country. Uh, we remember in 1990 when the Social Democratic Front, which is which is the first opposition party in Cameroon, uh, was born in Bamenda uh, in this uh, in the southwest uh, northwest region, and uh, it was born because at that time. The country was facing serious economic crisis, uh, which was followed later on by a devaluation of the CFA franc. Uh, today, the situation is less worse, but it's not that good either. Uh, we know that there is a, a um, commodity prices uh, crush in the commodity, commodity uh, crisis in the world, which has affected countries of the Central African region. And recently, the, the, those countries adopted several austerity measures that will impact citizens and impact the finances of the, of the country. And obviously, this will have a, a direct impact on uh, this type of, uh, you know, um, expression, uh, federalism and uh, marginalization expression by the Anglophone uh, region. But I think uh, separation is probably not not the solution, in, in, in my opinion. And Why is that? Um, because, well, it's been 16 years that both Cameroon have been trying to live together. And most importantly, citizens have accepted that reality. There is a language called in Cameroon, Cam Franglais, which mixes French, Cameroonian languages and, and English. So it means that Cam for Cameroonians, it's a fact that we are united. Now, but do the majority French speakers, uh, how do they feel about what's happening in the English speaking regions? Do they have some empathy? Do, do they understand the, the concerns? They would probably understand if they were explained more or better what's Are they even stake. informed about what's happening? That's the thing. Oh, that's a very good question. When there were a demonstration in the Anglophone part of the country, it coincided with the African uh, women um, football competition, the AFCON. Uh, 
And, uh, well, the priority was given to that competition uh, compared to what was happening in the Western region. But nevertheless, uh, thanks to social media, uh, people were informed of the fact that students had been bitten up, people had been judged, there were people who had been killed. Uh, they were informed of the harsh and repression, harsh response and re repression that occurred in the Western region. And they empathize. They, they, they felt empathy for that. So I think there is a, a room for dialogue compared to the, the, the policy of burying head in the sand that the Cameroonian government has been having for the past 60 years. Cameroonian citizens are ready for the dialogue. And I think that inclusive, uh, an inclusive dialogue uh, with anyone expressing what what could be the solution what is what uh, we could expect in, in Cameroon. You mentioned that it has come to people die, dying on, on the streets in, in Cameroon. What else can you tell us about how the authorities have responded to, to this unrest? For the authority, there is no problem. Uh, the Minister of Communication, is that Chiroma Bakari, said it several times that there is no Anglophone problem. But if there is no problem, why are people dying? Why are people uh, demonstrating? I think it's uh, this, this is a wake-up call for Cameroon to assess really what has been the, the, the administ administration and the policy that we have been, uh, I mean, the country has been governed since 19, uh, since the independence. It's a, it's a time for an assessment of that policy. And it's a time also for the government probably to suggest other ways uh, of, uh, you know, managing those two parts of the country. Because a lot of people would say this is actually an opportunity that bilingualism officially could make the country even stronger. Absolutely. In the 21st century, having a country where populations speak both French and English is an absolute asset. Uh, and moreover, uh, the, the, the Western Southern Cameroons, as, as it is called, is also a, a, one of the, 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 the most vital, economically vital places of the country, uh, Limbe, where uh, the, oil, were, I mean, the oil industry is so uh, lively, uh, Limbe situation in the Anglophone part. So what do you do with that? Do we want to separate from that economic uh, uh, opportunities or do we want to uh, harness this, this, uh, this asset and have a population being bilingual, have a country which is fully, which has fully entered the 21st century? I think this is probably where the, the country should go and where population want the authorities to take them today. Okay, Julia Wino from Internet Without Borders, thank, thank you very you. much indeed for your time and your analysis. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be back in a couple of minutes.